Hey everyone, it's Mr. Dave. I know it's been a hot minute since I've uh, put out a video, but uh, listen, I've been busy and uh, that's all I'm gonna say. So uh, I'm back and I wanted to show you something that I've been working on. Uh, one of the things that I like to do in my D&D &D games, especially for campaigns where there is a larger city or village where the players have a lot of choice to go to different places, uh, that's a lot for me as the GM to manage. So I really like using interactive maps where the players can see what's available, click, get a bit of information, and then choose to go there. Uh, one of the things that I use quite often uh, is called Legend Keeper. And Legend Keeper is essentially like a D&D wiki uh, that allows you to build out and keep track of all the things that are happening in your campaign. And uh, right here is uh, an area that I built. And you can see here in Legend Keeper, uh, I can put a map down and I can use these interactive tokens. I can choose to hide or not hide these tokens. And my players have access to this wiki. If this is hidden and they come to this area, they will not be able to see it. Uh, but if I unhide it, they can see it, click on it, and get all of this good information. And down here are secrets, so me as the GM can only see these parts. Uh, and then over here I have a menu of all of the things that are at this brew pub called the Minotaur and Butcher. So I thought, hmm, how can I recreate this in alchemy? Because really I would love to use alchemy as the central area that my players are using. And so that's what I'm going to show you what I came up with. So back in Alchemy, I have a scene. We built this in the last tutorial uh, where I showed how to build an interactive map. And one of the features that Alchemy has is what's called tactical mode. And if I click on tactical mode, I can add any map that I want. Here is a map that I've imported. And as you can see, it's, it's huge, right? I mean, you can zoom in and if I turn on the grid, you know, you can see that this is a massive map. One of the maps that comes to my mind is one of the D&D &D adventures called uh, The Tomb of Annihilation. And without giving too much away in case you haven't played it, one of the first areas that your players go to is this massive port. And they spend a good amount of time in that port. There's lots of uh, story hooks and missions and activities. But again, it's a lot as the GM to manage. I would want my players to be able to go around different parts of the city without me having to lead them. Uh, the way that I've come up with is I'm actually using NPC tokens to create uh, interactive map elements. So you can see here, I've gone ahead and created an NPC and called it Minotaur and Butcher. And if I go ahead and view this, and we'll go ahead and click edit, essentially what I've done is I've imported this icon and I went into Photoshop and created this myself and I named it the Minotaur and Butcher. I tried different sizes, but I felt like for locations, I wanted it to be super huge. So I did that. Uh, I gave it no type, no alignment. I went ahead and gave it a tag as location. And so my thought is as I'm creating these tokens, I'll give them all the tag of location so that way I can easily find it. Uh, and I zeroed out everything here. In trackers, uh, Alchemy gives you a lot of power here when it comes to locations like a tavern or a guild or something like that. Uh, I renamed this first one Reputation. Uh, I left the second one blank and then I labeled this third one Gold. For me, reputation is if I want to build locations within a city where the players can either increase or decrease their reputation depending on how they interact with that specific location, I can keep track here. As well as if I want, for instance, uh, taverns, bars, things like that, that might have gold in case you have, you know, players who like to rob and steal, uh, you can keep track of gold that way. But you can use trackers uh, any way you want. For features, uh, I left everything here blank. The only thing I did add in here for damage vulnerability is fire. Um, nothing in actions, nothing in spells, although you could put things in actions if you wanted to. And then last is this description. So if you look at here, you can see it matches uh, the same description, oops, sorry here, uh, the same description here. And this menu I put in there as well. So 
as a player, if I come to this and go to description, I can read everything. And then I have this nice little menu that I can see what I want. And uh, I really like this because, uh, you know, I've only created one, but assuming that I had five, six, seven of these around the map, uh, if I don't want my players to see this location, I can hide it just like in Legend Keeper. Uh, and then when I'm ready for them to see it, I can show them. Now, one of the things that I'll just call out is currently right now, there is no way to hide parts of your description. The only option you have down here is to make it public or not. So what you could do, whoops, let me come back in here. What I could do under description is I could have this off, save it. If I wanted this to be hidden, maybe it was a hidden tavern or a hidden guild, uh, and they were somewhere else in the city, they learned about it, I could go ahead and show it to the players, but when they clicked on it, they would not be able to see anything in the description. Now I'm the GM, so I can, until I unhide that. So I think in the future, the Alchemy team talked about adding the ability to hide portions of the description, and that's really where I think you could add as a GM all of your notes and and potentially open up more information. Uh, I think a really good use case for secrets is if I want to put uh, different adventure hooks uh, in this description for me as the GM, so that way when they go to this location, it's all right here. I don't have to have it in separate notes. Uh, the one thing I'm going to show you, however, is uh, if you have something like this and you want to get this into markdown format, uh, what I would suggest you do is you could go to any of the D&D online generators. Uh, there are quite a few, and you can generate a pub with a menu. So one of the uh, ones that I use is this one right here. Uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce that, um, but it's essentially a generator. It lets you generate all kinds of towns and if I come in here and just come down here and select Tavern, and I'll click Create New Building, and if I scroll down to the bottom, uh, it creates uh, a tavern called The Burning Monkey. If I click on The Burning Monkey, it takes me in here, and you can see all I need to do is click Menu, and it gives me a menu. Now, I need to now take this and convert it into Markdown. Now, this is a pretty short menu. Sometimes this can generate a really long menu. Well, let me show you real quick in case you wanna do it manually. So uh, in Alchemy, the way that you build a table in Markdown is like this. So if I come down here, uh, you just do a dash, you label the header, so in this case, uh, so I would put dish, I would do another one, and I would hit cost, and then I would do another, and then if I wanted to make it a column header, I would need to put at least three hyphens, and then I would come down and label my first dish one, and then cost one, and that would create my table. So if I went ahead and saved this and went back to description, you can see there's my my one table. Uh, now that can take a long time. So what I would recommend you do is use trusty chat GPT. And if you're not using chat GPT by now, um, I don't know what you're doing. You got to use it. It's free. So I would get yourself a free account. Come on over. Uh, you do not have to pay for it. And essentially what you're going to do is come down here. We're going to say um, create markdown table with the below data the column headers are dish and price uh, okay and then i'm just gonna come down here and paste my information and we're gonna go ahead and hit go and you can see boom it gives me my markdown i'm gonna copy this I'm going to pop back over to Alchemy, Edit, Description. We'll paste this right here. And if I wanted to, I could label this something different. I could label this, I don't know, Secret Menu. Okay. And we'll go ahead and hit Save.
And now we've got our menu and we've got our secret menu. So easy peasy, just like that. And again, I've only got one here, but you know, again, if you had five or six in there, you could do taverns, you could do restaurants, you could do guilds. And the goal here is that you could show and hide uh, the icons as needed and share and show the description as needed. And as the GM, uh, while it requires a bit of uh, upfront um, editing of alchemy, you know, you have it built, I would suggest you do this in your content area and then that way you could import it, uh, especially if you have an agnostic map. So just creating a general village you like to use in a lot of your campaigns, you can create this once, you can create all of the different shops and then you can import it into your campaigns as needed. So. Uh, I know this is a short video. Hope it was helpful. Um, hope, uh, you know, for those of you that were looking to do interactive maps, this is just one way that uh, I use it in alchemy. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.